So if you're looking to buy a new MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro or M1 Max chipset, here is the straight head on head comparison between a pretty much fully loaded M1 Max MacBook Pro. Uh, specific specs, this has the 64 gigs of RAM with the four terabytes of solid state storage. The only higher grade version is the eight terabyte storage, but the storage shouldn't affect the performance too much. Versus a more baseline M1 Mac Pro, MacBook Pro, with 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of solid state storage. So here we go. Colorblind Architect and today I'm doing a head-to-head -head test between the M1 Pro MacBook Pro 16 inch and the M1 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch. Um, the M1 Pro model that I have has 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte solid state storage and on the M1 Max it's 64 gigs of RAM and four terabytes. Now, so why am I doing Cinebench and Geekbench tests? So these are baseline tests. These are basically testing the hardware just as a baseline. It's not going to actually be a 100% representation of your day-to-day -day performance. So do not trust these numbers implicitly, but it is something that can help you identify the general quality of a particular build. Now, let's get started first talking about Cinebench. Now, Cinebench is uh, made by Maxon, which is a Maycheck company. It's a, it's a standard in the industry for testing how well a computer renders. Now, this particular test tests only the CPU. Um, it tests multi-core and it tests uh, it also tests the single core. Uh, on the single core, that means it's just testing one core of the CPU um, just to see how fast it is. And then multi-core tests the computer at how well it multi-threads across the cores that are available and gives you a total score. Obviously on the multi-core, the higher, higher the score is usually indicative of how many cores you have, but obviously the speed of each core plays into that score. Now one of the things that you might might be surprised as you get into the Cinebench scores is the difference between the M1 Pro and the M1 Max is negligible. Okay, so I ran the test. The multi-core and single core scores for both laptops were virtually identical. So, um, now they were pretty good scores, um, testing well above any other laptop that I saw on the list, but um, yeah, compared to a desktop with thread, AMD Threadripper, um, no, it doesn't compare to that. Compared to an Intel Xeon, no, no, it, uh, it doesn't compare to that. But for laptops, it's right there near the top. Um, so absolutely great performance. Um, does a really good job with rendering, but here's the reason why you're going to see that score. Um, the M1 Pro and the M1 Max in the 16-inch MacBook Pro configurations uh, both have 10 cores. They're the identical CPUs, so it's not going to matter uh, what your RAM is. It's not going to matter how many graphics processing cores you have. It's just going to matter on those 10 CPU cores that both of them have. So that's why Cinebench is going to reveal itself to be identical between the two. So now let's move on to Geekbench. So if you're not familiar with Geekbench, Geekbench is another uh, bench test application uh, you can download it on the internet. It's uh, pretty simple and it tests in three areas. It tests single core, multi-core, and compute, which is your 
graphics processing. Now, on the test, comparing the two, I got almost identical scores for the single core score. Um, on the single core for the um, M1 Pro, my score was 1739, and on the M1 Max, 1759, so a negligible difference. So if we move on to the uh, multi, the, the multi-core score, here's where there's a slight difference, uh, a little bit more of a difference, but not much. Um, the multi-core score was 11,705 for the M1 Pro and 12,002 for the M1 Max. Now, of course, these scores are meaningless except as comparisons to other units. So in terms of how they perform on the cores, again, same as Cinebench, uh, if you look at the Geekbench scores and compare it to similar devices, um, the MacBook Pro is basically at the top of the list for laptops, but still performing um, weak compared to a fully blown desktop. So that's no surprise. Now let's move on to the compute scores. So compute scores, uh, this measures your graphics processing unit. Now, one of the, one of the advantages to the MacBook Pro is the graphics processing unit is actually in the same SOC, system on a chip, as the CPU, and it shares the same RAM. So you actually get a huge performance boost compared to a standard computer design. The disadvantage is you're not getting the best-in-class GPU, the NVIDIA, um, you know, cards. The NVIDIA still just has the best graphics processing cards on the market, so that's where on the graphics processing, you're not even gonna come close to the desktop performance if you have one of the top of the line uh, GPUs made by um, NVIDIA. But what you will get on the OpenCL score, and so this is where um, Geekbench uses OpenCL um, graphic, the graphics processing language, um, which is what ARCHICAD uses, by the way. <laughs> that's, that's the primary means by which ARCHICAD pr uh, produces its 3D models. Uh, on the M1 Pro, the OpenCL score is 37,158. And the M1 Pro has a score of 59,752. Eek, yeah, that's a, that's a very big difference. Not quite double, but nearly double. Um, which is actually to be expected because the M1 Pro has 16 graphics cores and the M1 Max has 32. So we should expect the M1 Max to actually be double of the M1 Pro. So let's look at Metal. So Metal is Apple's 3D, um, you know, 3D um, rendering, um, you know, processing language that they use in all their Apple Silicon games and stuff like that that uh, run on it. This is where I was a little bit surprised. The difference was actually not as big as it was on the OpenCL. On the metal score for the M1 Pro, it was 41,957. And for the M1 Max, it was 66,362. Both of them perform better in metal than on OpenCL, which is not a surprise because metal is native to Apple Silicon, um, whereas OpenCL, that's, even though that was Apple helped in the production of OpenCL language back in the day. Um, it's an open platform that any manufacturer can use. And so it's it's also a much older uh, format. But like I said, that's what ARCHICAD uses. So if you are looking at this for ARCHICAD, there you go. So those are the scores. So if you're looking just straight at benchmark scores, um, 
if all you care about is CPU performance, um, there's no reason to go with the M1 Max, unless you need it for the RAM. However, if you do a lot of 3D, and you're orbiting in 3D a lot, you're going through big models, uh, yeah, absolutely, the M1 Max is a huge improvement. Um, in the next video, I'm gonna be talking about Revit on the M1 Max, and, I'm, and then in another video, I'll do an actual uh, test of ArchiCAD on the M1 Max using a very large model, um, uh, 300,000 square foot multifamily, with, complete with all the furniture, doors, everything in there so that we can really check, uh, check, okay, can this thing really hold up to a big workflow? And with that said, Colorblind Architect, peace out.